All right, hello everyone. Hello, hello. Fish says hi too. Maybe. Come on in, how are you doing? Can you doing all right? This morning I, w I went to my other class, went to campus, it was all rainy and kind of nasty out. And this is a, a grad class of six students. And so I normally teach that one in person. And I was asking them, you know, if it's rainy and nasty in the future, how about I just teach online? And they're all like, yeah, let's do that. So hopefully you're, you're inside comfortable somewhere and enjoying um, rain-free moment at least. Um, so a couple of quick announcements here before we get going. Um, I have been very busy with lots of stuff. Um, we have new faculty candidates, so we have an open position for a new assistant professor in our environmental group and we're trying to hire somebody and we've been having interviews um, this past week and we have another one tomorrow. So there's just lots and lots of um, meetings and seminars and things that I have been um, taking my time this, this past week or so. Um, so I have not finished grading the exams. In fact, I've not been able to make much progress lately. Um, I will still, I'll try to be working on it this week, uh, see if I can get any progress before class on Thursday. Um, otherwise, I will um, do my best to have them done uh, for you next week. Uh, so my apologies there. I, I will get there. Hopefully you've got the solutions and are comfortable looking through those and comparing your answers with the answers I posted and getting a, a decent idea of where your grade ought to stand. Okay, but yeah, I, I know that's important to you and I, I will get to it as soon as I'm able to. Um, another announcement is that I've posted a required reading. Um, when I say this is required, what I'm talking about is I will post a participation um, quiz on this. So if you were to look at our um, section on granular filtration, you'll see this required reading kind of up at the top um, and the slides so far. Uh, so if you, if you go to that required reading, um, it takes you to this paper. Uh, you might have to be logged into um, LSU. Well, yeah, I guess you would be if you're on Google. I, I think it should open directly, but if not, I've got a, a link to this title at the end of our slides today. Um, so you can look it up, and you just might have to access through the um, LSU libraries. So this is describing uh, an outbreak, um, a massive cryptosporidium outbreak. So we'll talk about it a little bit towards the end of the, um, the class, but it, it has relevance to water treatment on several levels, uh, including granular filtration. So I want you to take a look. Um, I don't require that you know every last detail here, but I do want you to take enough of a look, and it's a very interesting case, um, enough of a look to understand what went wrong, what happened, um, and kind of what, what were their conclusions. So you don't need to read and understand every sentence here, but definitely take a look. Um, I'll touch on it more at the end of class, um, kind of serve as a, a double announcement for anybody that tuned in late. Okay, with that, um, and unless you guys have any questions about uh, course uh, issues or logistics, always welcome to ask. Um, with that, I'll go ahead and get into today's lecture. So today we're going to be talking about, or continue talking about granular filtration. Last time we were taking a look at how we determine um, when to backwash a granular filter. So if you remember, the situation is we have these filter beds, which are Typically rectangular beds, you know, we might draw something like that and essentially 
these guys are filled with a granular media. And then we pour water on top of that. And that water goes through the media and is collected and we have some filtration occurring. And then the question is, how often do we have to take them down for maintenance, um, to back flush them, to take all that dirt and grime and send that to the wastewater? And so what we were describing last time was we could take a look at how dirty the water is with um, looking at turbidity over time. And turbidity, you know, maybe we, we have a lot when we rinse and then it um, clears up and then it kind of slowly rises. And then at some point we might be getting um, too high if we have some set limit to say this is the safe level. At some point it gets too high and we have to stop. Um, we could also do like a head loss limit or a time limit, just straight up, okay, here's the time we're gonna back, we're gonna stop and backwash. So the question at the end of the day becomes how much water can we really produce in net, in total, um, given a, a specific type of filter? And how do we calculate that so that we can understand how many filters we really need? Okay, so what we're gonna look for today is an equation that, or, or several equations that describe exactly that. Um, so we're gonna introduce a few definitions here. First, um, what I want to describe is production rate. So last time we, we described a little plot here with a, a phase where we're rinsing or ripening our filter. Then we're producing, this is when we're actually making clean water from dirty water. Then towards the end, we'll often do like an air purge or maybe just straight backwash, but we have some you know, dedicated time to do that component to clean it before we start over again. And of course, just after cleaning, we need to rinse and we can't really use the rinse water because it's kind of dirty still. So given that, um, we need to define some rates of production. So we have, first of all, the production rate, um, or we can also call it a loading rate, and we're gonna call that lowercase v a. That's the term that the book uses, so I'm gonna um, use it here. This is describing how fast water is going through the filter during production. So we're gonna describe that as the volume that's going through the area. So if we have, again, kind of an aerial view this time of the bed, and we have water going through it, some volume of it will be going through per time, right? But we also have maybe a length and a width of this filtration bed. And so we can say um, volume per time per area. So this is going to be the same concept as a flux that we'll describe when we, in our next section on membrane filtration, where we, we have like a flat sheet or a a membrane of some sort that we're pushing water through. And so here, what we're looking at is that volume divided by the area, di also divided by time. So essentially this goes, this is the flow rate per area. This also equals a velocity, meters per second, for example, or we could write it as um, distance per time, so like meters per second or something like that. So when we look at it that way, we're, we're basically saying that the water is just going through at this velocity. Um, then if we know something about the area, we can calculate how much volume is going through per time. So it, it's a, a very simple concept here. It's basically the the velocity at which the water is going through the filter. And we can use that if we know the amount of filter area to calculate the flow rate, things like that, um, or vice versa. So uh, when we're solving these 
these problems, um, we'll keep in mind that this Q here, this is a flow rate through the filter. And that's not to be confused with a given flow rate if we say the plant itself needs to provide, you know, five cubic meters per second to a very large city or something. Um, that's going to be different if we're talking about one filter, the area of one filter, the plant, you know, the flow rate through one filter is going to be different than the, the flow rate through the entire plant. Now, maybe we can say Q, and I can't write there. We could maybe say that Q for the entire filtration or entire treatment plant is equal to Q of a filter multiplied by the number of filters in the plant. Or, yeah, like, like Reese is saying, we could also say this is equal to the sum of Q filters where we're summing it across however many filters we've got. Yeah, you could you could divvy it up given, you know, you, you could multiply it by the number of filters if they're all the same, or you could just sum them based on all the different filters you have. Typically, you're going to have the same size filters, so that's a, a, a good question or, or a comment there. Um, it, it doesn't really matter too much, but what I wanted to make sure you, you note is that you'll have word problems where we're describing the Q or the flow rate, but it's in the context of the entire plant. And then when you go to solve and you then are considering this equation here, which is this equation, what we're doing is we're applying a specific flow rate to a specific filter. So just keep that in mind that those are um, connected but distinct topics. Essentially, our, our end goal is to derive how much um, water a plant can produce or how much a given filter or how many filters we need. So we're, we want to connect these concepts when we solve problems. Um, so just make sure you keep this, uh, that distinction clear. Okay, so let's look at how to describe the efficiency of a filter um, given on a, on a water basis. So efficiency on that water basis, what we're talking about is um, how much water that's clean that we produced. So this clean stuff um, versus kind of the uh, versus the wasted um, or the, the stuff that did not get used. So in this case, what we're going to do is define filter efficiency as mu. And we're going to say this is equal to the volume that we filtered during production minus the volume of water that we used during the backwash minus the water we used during the rinse and divide that new number by the total number, total volume that we filtered. Okay. So we're going to take a look at how to find these volumes in a moment, but let's make sure we're clear on how we are defining these volumes. So VF, the V filter, the volume, this is a capital V. So I, I do apologize, but I'm, I'm keeping with the book. They have both a lowercase V and an uppercase V here. So keep in mind that the uppercase is the volume, the lowercase is that loading rate. So big VF, this is talking about the volume of water produced and that's going to be during production. We might call this production, or we might call this the time where we are filtering, doing performing the filtration. Now, of course, when we're backwashing, in some way we are filtering the dirty water. And when we are rinsing, we are filtering, but what I'm referring to here is the, the production of clean water through our filters. So this is where we get uppercase B F. Now, the volume for backwash, VB, that's the volume used during that backwash step. So obviously the, uh, the air purge requires air, not water. So we're not gonna waste any water there, although we would 
need to power our air pumps. The volume for backwash would then be however much volume we use during that time period. Now, sometimes the, the rate at which we're backwashing is the same. We just keep the, the pumps all at the same speed and we say we'll backwash at the same speed that we um, do our normal operation. Sometimes we might want to backwash a little faster. So we push water up a little bit faster backwards through the filters. So we might need to account for that with a, a loading rate that is specific to backwashing. That's why we have a, a lowercase v, b over here. So don't, don't get confused again that's a lowercase versus an uppercase. What we're talking about is the, the backwashing rate, the backwashing loading rate here compared to the volume of water used for backwash. Okay, and finally we have volume of rinse. That's the, during the rinse stage, that's how much volume of water we use for that rinse. Now, during that part, um, we are loading it with that lowercase va. We're going to rinse at the same exact condition that we're going to produce water. Because as we're rinsing, we want to keep the same, um, the same conditions as we're preparing to produce water because we don't want anything to change between. We want it to be to rinse out all the junk that might still come out um, at the same speed so that no variables are changing and suddenly we might get more dirt and grime coming out that was residual um, if we shifted the uh, flow rate. So this is always going to be loaded for the rinse at the same, um, at the same speed as during production. So the lowercase va, that loading rate, the rate at which we're loading water onto the filter is constant for those two conditions. Okay, so how do we find the volume then? Um, let's think about what we're doing. We're adding water onto a rectangle. That water is going through the rectangle and we know the area of the rectangle and we know the speed of it. So then we can calculate the volume simply by saying we have the area of the filter times the speed at which the water is going through it times time. So what that's going to give us here is area in meters squared times the speed in meters per second times time in seconds. Now, of course, we need to make sure these units are matching and these units are matching. So we have some unit work that might be important. But essentially this gives us cubic meters in this case. Now you, you could be given some other value. In fact, in our previous slide here, we were taking a look and we said the typical production rate is somewhere between five and 25 cubic meters per square meter per second, or between two and 10 gallons per minute per square foot. So when you think about gallons per minute per square foot, this is one reason I, I really don't like um, using our uh, English metrics. I would certainly prefer our metric units here um, because you can see that's a lot more unit conversions that you're going to have to step through in order to do your conversions here if you're using gallons and minute, or well, gallons and feet um, that are not directly related. You know, it's a lot easier to go from cubic meters to liters or to meters um, than otherwise. Okay, so one thing I want to highlight here is, is that, you know, you could write the same thing as, and you know, if you took the, the VA instead of writing in meters per second, you could also write it in cubic meters per square meter per second or something like that. So even if you have a different loading rate um, unit set up, it's still going to be the same process, right? We have meters squared for the area. So that's going to be the area of the filter times the loading rate times 
the time for that given process. So whether it's the, the time of filtration, the time of the rinse, or the time of the backwash. Whatever the case is, whichever one we're solving for, that's the one we're going to use. And so with that, we're going to have, let's say, in this case, it would be seconds. So with that, if you take a look at the units, these cancel, these cancel, and we're left with cubic meters. It's the same process if you had just meters per second here. We have, we have the same resulting units. Now keep in mind that you might have liters per um, liters per square meter per second, and of course you're going to have to do some conversions there. Again, that the units are important. Okay, with that we have really everything we need in order to solve for the filter efficiency. So this is going to give us a number that is on a water basis how efficient is a given filter over time um, in, during its operation. So that is quite useful. Um, and we're going to introduce a second, excuse me, a second concept that gives us a similar type of analysis, the effective loading rate of a filter. And they are similar but not exactly the same and I'll, I'll explain what I mean in a moment. So we have the filter efficiency. It's helpful. Um, the other thing we need is to understand the net loading rate. So if we were to if we were to take that same concept from a moment ago, the volume, how much volume does a filter produce as it's going through its cycles? You know, I don't care about how much volume it produces in one production. I care about in a, in a year's time span, how much volume, what's the average or net volume that I'm producing every day. You know, that's from an operations perspective, that's more important. I need to know how many of these I need so that they can go offline when they need to, and I'm still producing as much volume as I need, um, as much flow to our, our community so we can continue providing um, a continuous uh, water supply. So um, what we need then is an effective or net loading rate. And here we're going to describe that as, as REF. Again, using the book's terminology here, this is similar to VA, but not quite. So this is going to be analogous to VA. So instead of, instead of VA, um, we're going to use our effective if we're going to look at the performance of the filter across you know its entire cycle so ref is essentially the net speed or flux across filter across a filter or the filter or across the filters um, in when you average in the amount of water wasted um, so I'll say over entire cycle okay so given that um, the way we're going to define it is similar to what we just did with the filter efficiency. Uh, this time what we're looking at is the volume of clean water divided by the time it took to get that clean water. So the volume of clean water is going to be equal to um, that volume per area of filtered water minus the volume per area of the backwash water minus the volume per area of the rinsed water. All of that divided by essentially the total cycle time. So this here is the total cycle time. And so we can we can rearrange that and say, well, um, 
that's the same thing as taking that area of the filter in each one of these and just pulling it down below. So it kind of simplified version is just to say it's the volume filtered minus the volume backwashed minus the volume rinsed divided by the area of the filter times the total cycle time or TC. So that's where we get that equation. And one thing you'll note is that this, um, we'll say V a times the filter efficiency is not quite, but often close. We'll say sometimes, sometimes it's approximately equal to the REF. So I don't want you to use this relationship unless you're just checking your work. Um, the reason it's not always correct, well, there's two reasons. First of all, the amount of water in the backwash. So our, our effective loading rate deals on a time basis. It does matter about the volume, but it's also time. So if you change the volume, the, um, the rate at which you're backwashing, that can have an impact. And if you, you change the amount of time for air. Let's say you take two days in your filtration cycle to do air purge for whatever reason. That time spent air purging is reducing your, your net loading rate. Whereas you might have a really, really good filtration efficiency. Maybe you just used a lot of air and you saved a lot of water because you used almost no water for backwash. Um, so your filtration efficiency on a water basis is really, really high. But if you spent so much time air purging, you know, kind of a silly example, um, then your, your effective loading rate is going to be a lot lower than your filtration loading rate. Because remember, our filtration loading rate happens during the production phase. So all, all of this to say is try not to confuse these two concepts. This kind of works sometimes, but it's not a guarantee. So keep the filter efficiency separate from the um, effective loading rate. So, um, and the reason we have to do that is because there are parameters that can impact uh, the, the setup here. You're still going to calculate the volumes the same way. So it's going to be a very similar calculation to the um, filter efficiency, you're just going to use that cycle time and you're going to use the area of the filter here. And that's instead of just keeping it on a, a water basis. Okay. Does that make sense? Do you, you feel like you could solve for the volume that was used during backwashing? Um, I'll have a, I'll have a practice problem here for you in a minute. So you'll have certainly have chances to, um, to ask questions. Speaking of, um, let's take a look at this one. We have here um, a problem from our book on page 360. We have a conventional water treatment plant. It's treating 2.4 cubic meters per second of river water. The filters in the plant are eight by eight meters in surface area, and they operate in the following schedule. A filter is cleaned once in each 24 hour period, and the backwash rate is 10 liters per square meter per second for a period of eight minutes. It takes an additional eight minutes to drain the filter, break up the media with air injection, and, and break up the media with air injection. So eight minutes are spent just draining and air purging. Um, of the total fil filter cycle time of 24 hours, 15 minutes is used for the rinse, um, rinsing of the filter after backwashing. And then it also gives us during production, the water is applied to the filter at a rate of 5.5 liters per square meter per second. So then it asks us, A, what is the filter efficiency? 
and B, what is the minimum number of filters required by the plant? Okay, so a couple things going on here, and um, first thing I would recommend you do is just if you if you're feeling unclear about things, um, there's just a little more space here. We'll come to that for part B. Um, draw out that filtration cycle diagram. Um, label the components and um, get yourself set up so that you know kind of what you're doing here. Um, so go ahead and take a few minutes to do this. I'm actually going to go grab some coffee while you do that. I'll be right back and then I'll start solving it with you. So I'm just going to mute this for the moment. So I'll be right back. Okay, so mystery solved. I do wear dress pants when I teach because I wear dress pants earlier in the day for teaching. Um, can't promise that I've never worn pajamas while teaching. Anyway, so um, this problem here, hopefully you guys uh, had a moment to take a look. So we'll start with the filter efficiency. Um, we remember from just a, a few moments ago, we said that the filter efficiency, this is the water basis. So we have the amount of volume filtered minus the volume used backwashing minus the volume used rinsing. All that divided by the volume used for backwashing. So what we're really talking about is three volumes. The volume that we earned during filtration, the volume that we spent for backwashing, and the volume that we spent for rinsing. And each of these is going to depend on um, these parameters that were given. So we will set this up. Um, essentially, we just need to solve for all three of those. And then we'll be good to go. So the volume for the filtration. Well, one thing I'll go ahead and say, the other thing we know is the area of one filter is 64 square meters because we were told it's eight by eight. Um, if you notice that it's at the very start, the problem says it treats to 2.4 cubic meters per second of river water. That's the, the Q for the plant. Um, so we're going to make use of that when we solve for part B. Okay, so we said that to solve for the volume, we had to take the area of a filter times the loading rate. 
and then times the amount of time, so in this case, the time of filtration. Do that same process for each of these. That should be area of filter. In this case, we need to use the, the loading rate for the backwash, time of the backwash. And again, here for the rinse, we're loading at the same rate we're loading during filtration, so that's VA. All right, so we just need to put all of those numbers in and make sure we have the correct units, and then we can solve our problem. I'm gonna go ahead and open Excel and do that in Excel with you. So let's start here. Um, we want the F, we also want the B and the R. So there's spaces for each of those. What we know, the area of the filter is 64 square meters. We know that the um, Total cycle time is 24 hours. We know the backwash rate, so the V, lowercase v backwash is equal to 10 liters per square meter per second. Write it that way. And then we also know the loading rate is equal to 5.5 liters per square meter per second. Okay, I'm gonna insert a couple of those here. We know that the time for um, backwash is equal to eight minutes. The time for the Air purge and draining is also eight minutes. And then the time for rinsing was 15 minutes. Okay, so a few conversions we need to do. Um, we have items in seconds and minutes. We have items in hours and we have um, square meters, meters and liters. So what I want to do next is go ahead and get all these units on the same page, and then we can go ahead and enter in some equations for these three um, values here. Let's go ahead and target to solve these in um, cubic meters. So our answer should be in cubic meters. Potentially, you could use liters. Um, that is something that you are perfectly able to do, and then the units don't end up mattering so much in uh, in this particular case where we're, we're dealing with um, a fraction, right? The filter efficiency is essentially a fraction. What fraction of the water that we filtered became usable water, right? That's essentially what we're talking about. So I'm gonna go ahead with cubic meters. Um, so I'll convert everything from liters into cubic meters. So this will be, you know, let me um, zoom in a little bit more. How does this look? Is this, do you guys find this helpful um, for me to use Excel and do the calculations with you, or would you rather this already be done or worked out on the page? Um, if you have any feedback about that, um, yes, helpful, um, or make a comment if it's if you feel like it might be a better if I, I took another approach. So what I'm going to do here is. Um, Okay, great. So I'm going to take from this number and just do my unit conversions just a, a couple spots over. All right, so what I'll do is I'll take this number, and since I'm taking it from liters to cubic meters, there are many liters in every 
cubic meters. So I need to take this and divide it by 1,000, because that'll give us, um, you know, if there were 10 liters, there's only 0 0.01 cubic meters. And then the other units are just sitting there because we didn't change the other units. All right. I'm going to maybe move this out of the way. Don't need to see that stuff anyway. OK. All right. So then we'll do the same process for both of those. Um, so here now we're converting this guy, dividing it by 1,000 to get us from liters to cubic meters. Um, I think we might end up wanting the, the uh, cycle time in minutes. So we can divide that 24 hours by 60, um, excuse me, multiply by 60 minutes per hour. Okay. Um, you know, given that we have everything now in minutes, but we also have our loading rates in seconds, I think it might actually make sense to go ahead and convert those loading rates to minutes as well. So instead of keeping them as cubic meters per square meter per second, let's do cubic meters. And by the way, when I wrote this, I'm, what I really uh, should have done was either put a parentheses or put a division there. That, that's what I mean here. So these are the adding the parentheses here makes it clear what the correct means are. And I should have done so. Okay, so let's convert those into minutes here, and hopefully that'll make it just a little bit clearer in terms of what's going on. Okay, then we won't have to worry about any, any other conversions while we're working. So, given that, let's take uh, this guy, and right now the seconds are on the denominator, so if we're talking about something happening every second, well, we're going to have 60 of those happen every minute, right? So that just tells me I need to multiply this by 60 seconds per every minute. That'll give us, that'll cancel the seconds and leave minutes on the denominator. So that should be right. Okay, so then we've converted the units. Now we have cubic meters per square meter per minute. Everything else is in meters and minutes, so long as we use that one. Um, so I think we're, we're ready. So the volume filter is going to be the area of the filter here times, you know, and, and what we remember here, I'm going to move this back a little bit. Oops. Move it back this way. So we see our equations. So we have the area of the filter times the loading rate. So here we're going to multiply by that loading rate, but we want to make sure the units are consistent. So we're going to keep it in meters and minutes. So I'm using that one over there. So that's our, our um, loading rate for filtration. And finally, multiply that by the time spent in filtration. Now, what we're noticing right now is I do not have a TF but I need a TF. So it's like WTF. Gotcha. Um, where is TF? That's what I meant, right? I'm not, I'm not swearing. Okay, here we go. Um, so we, we needed that one last aspect and we want it in minutes. So here we have the, the time of the filtration is basically going to be, and, and thank you for laughing. I appreciate that. I, I was proud of that, that pun joke whatever it is. Um, I know, I know puns are, are not always appreciated, but appreciate you for appreciating. All right. So the time of the filtration, we have all these times. We have the, the total time. We have the backwash time, air purge time, the rinse time, but we were never given the, the filtration time. Um, so this is another component that we just ran into. We recognize, oh, there's another piece of this problem that we need. Um, and so as I'm working through this, it's like, OK, so we need to solve this filtration time. Well, what that's going to be, again, if we, if we remember our 
setup here, the the time that's fil used for filtration is basically everything except the backwash and the um, the air purge, right? So we'll we'll also have a little spot where we're doing air purge, but there's no volume there. So that's essentially what what's going to happen here is we're going to take all of the time spent doing any of those things and subtract it from the total cycle time because we were given the total cycle time and um and then we are we are set to go um we are going to remove we're also going to include that um well let me rephrase this the filtration time is everything except the production time i'm, I'm sorry the total includes everything the filtration time is is the whole cycle time minus the rinse time minus the backwash time minus the air time so Hopefully this will make sense when I do it here. So the total filtration time is going to be equal to one, one full cycle minus the rinse minus, oops, sorry, let me yeah, redo that. It's going to be um, the total minus the amount of time we spent rinsing minus the amount of time we spent air purging minus the amount of time we spent backwashing. So it should be close to the full cycle time. So <clears throat> 1409 minutes compared to the 24 hours, which was 1440 minutes. Okay, with that, we are finally ready to go. So now we say our volume that we filtered, we produced during filtration, is gonna be the time of filtration times the area of the membrane, excuse me, of the uh, filter. Um, so that was and then time multiplied by our loading rate. So VA. So there we go. We have um, basically half a million cubic meters during that were produced during that filtration time. <clears throat> Except I did something wrong. And uh, what you'll notice here, because that's that's a very large number. And what you'll notice here is what I did was I used the loading rate without converting the units, right? Um, I used this, yep. And that, that's because what I just did here was I used this one and I should have been using this one. So let's uh, go ahead and correct that. So instead of B, F here. Okay, so now let's double check. Um, this is the area of the filter times our um, loading rate for filtration once we've done conversions times the total number of minutes here so i think this should be the correct answer at 29,758 um so reese why don't you check to see what um so colin which one did you get did you get my answer or reese's so Double check me here. I'm going to go ahead and fill in what should be the, the way to do the next one as well. Okay. All right, so um, Reese, then double check that uh, you use the correct loading rate. You might have used the backwash loading rate there for the filtration. Okay, so, okay, so then the last things that we're doing here, um, the volume for the backwash and the volume for the rinse, we're again using the same exact um, formulas here where it's the um, volume, the area of the filter times the, the loading rate times the time of backwash. Yeah, so um, Reese, what you did was you used the volume, the, the loading rate for the backwash. So the, vol the loading rate for the backwash comes out to 0.6 um, here. The loading rate for the, uh, the um, production time comes out to be 0.33. And so that, that's why we end up having a slight difference here. Um, so be careful when, when you're solving, solving these problems to make sure you're getting the right spots. So the, the problem itself gives you um, gives you this whoops, 
this number here for the backwash rate, um, and then this number here for the loading. Now, let me mention here that sometimes you will have a problem that does not give you any special information about a backwash rate. If no, if no um, backwash rate is given, just assume it's the same rate as the production rate. If there's no lowercase v b, so backwash rate, you can assume, and feel free to write this out, that v b is equal to the loading rate. Um, some some filtration plants do that. It's not too uncommon. Um, typically, the backwashing rate is going to range from somewhere between equal to the loading rate to about double the loading rate. In this case, we see it's almost double the loading rate. And as, as you saw, it, it can certainly make a difference if you accidentally use that backwashing rate out of the, the water production, you know, the filtration rate. But um, there you have it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, do the last step here and say the new um, is going to be equal to this guy. Well, let's go ahead and move parentheses. We'll have this one minus this one minus this one, all divided by that production. So our, I, I just typed in this right here. Um, so given that our filter efficiency is 0.98 or 0.979 when we uh, when it installed it. Okay, so then part B asks, what is the minimum number of filters required by the plant? So what we're going to do is look at um, we need a Q total equals 2.40 cubic meters per second. And that's, that's a uh, flow rate for the entire plant. Um, what we need to know is effectively how many, how much water or how quickly are we producing water from each one filter. Because then we can say, you know, if we take the effective loading rate, multiply that by the area of a filter, that's going to be kind of the Q effective for one filter. If I were to, to write out subscripts or eons, right? That's, a, that's what we would be talking about. So then we could say um, we need a Q total to be equal to, and this is, this is not some formula that I'm recommending you remember or whatever. This is just the intuition here in terms of how to get, how to, get to an answer for this type of problem. Um, so what we would do is we take this Q total that we need and set that equal to this Q effective for one filter and multiply that by X number of filters, right? So we'll say Q effective for one filter times some number of filters. And then we can solve for that number of filters. There's more than one way to approach this. Um, it's going to be some form that equates to this approach. Um, instead of putting this Q effective, you could just simply write it as R effective times area of the filter times number of filters. You know, there, there's going to be way, different ways to arrange this and perhaps other ways to um, solve it altogether. But it's going to be the same principle. You're, you're figuring out how much water are you actually getting given the filtration setup and, and how is that going to play a, a role. Okay, so with that, you should probably already have just about all the pieces in place. Um, let me just remind you that the R effective, the equation for that is going to be Vf minus Vb minus Vr divided by area of a filter times the total cycle time. Okay. 
Now, um, one other thing to keep in mind is our Q total, this is in seconds, so we should probably get this in meters per second, which is the same as cubic meters per square meter per second. So we, we probably want to actually go back and use those units. So um, hopefully you had a chance to kind of think about this. Feel free to pause if you need. Um, I'm going to go ahead and dive right into it with the uh, Excel. Um, no, let's do this. Okay, you're getting you're getting ahead of me here. Yeah, see, so you, you would certainly need to round to the next round up to the next whole number for the filters. Um, you're exactly right here. So. We'll take a look at what this comes out to be, and then I'll uh, discuss that. Okay, so part B, we're looking at the minimum number of filters required. We have this R effective. What, what for? Well, we, we need this R effective. Um, so we're going to say, actually, we have just about all of this information in our spreadsheet already. So the way, way I'm going to structure this is essentially just to... Um, make use of everything we've already done. Um, I think it'll be a little clearer if I just do this. Okay, so we're going to say this is the volume filter. Well, again, let me, let's see. Volume filter minus that volume backwashed minus the volume rinsed. That divided by the area of the filter times the total cycle time. Now, I just realized I was just saying I want this all in seconds, but I don't have time in seconds. So I'm just going to go ahead and put my cursor there and go ahead and convert seconds right there. Yeah, it's going to be dividing by zero for more. Um, so this will be in seconds. We'll take 1440 minutes times 60 seconds per minute. Should give us 86,400 seconds in every 24 hours. So back to this. This is our equation. We've got Vf minus Vb um, minus Vr, all that divided by the area of the filter times the total cycle time. That gives us an answer in meters per second. So 0 0.00527 meters per second. And we can compare that to the um, the effective loading rate in cubic meters per second. And one thing to note here is that these two should be a little bit um, a little bit different. So if we're looking at 0 0.00527, the effective should be at least a little bit smaller than the actual loading rate during filtration because we're not going to mysteriously produce more water. It's not going to mysteriously become effectively faster than in reality because we have to subtract from it. So this should always be a little bit lower than VA, um, if not a lot lower. So um, we solved this and said our effective is equal to 0 0.00527, is it 527, I believe, meters per second. And when we looked at the loading rate in those same units, that was 0 0.0055, I think, yeah, meters per second. And so this looks good. Um, we'll say this one, uh, let's see, play that for This is always smaller but hopefully similar than this, okay? So hopefully that makes sense um, why I would make that note. It's a way you can double check your work, um, kind of double checking that you're in the right, right ballpark there. Okay, so with that, 
we have that R effective, and then we can say that R effective, multiply that by our area, because that's going to convert this from meters per second into cubic meters per second. So REF times area of one filter. Now, let me just pause here for a moment. You could say that you could solve for the total filtration area required and then divide that total area of the filtration required by 64 cubic uh, square meters per every filter to get your total number of filters. So that's another way to approach this. Um, you know, the plant requires X amount of area, and it's going to be in installments of 64 square meters every time. So th that's just another way. It, it's the same algebraically when you work it out. Um, I'm going to continue with this one. So this was that REF times area of the filter, this is going to be equal to the Q for one filter. Um, it's the effective one. So I'm going to go ahead and write this Q effective one filter. And I'm going to say this is equal to this guy times the area of one filter. That's going to be cubic meters per second. So each one filter is providing 0.337 uh, cubic meters per second. Okay, so with that, then we can simply say the total divided by Q for one filter, and again, this is the, the effective flow rate. This is not the flow rate during production, because that would be different. We have to account for um, account for the times where we backwash. So this will give us some, um, basically the, the number of filters required, right? So we'll take, we'll say the number of filters equals um, and well, before I do that, let's say Q total. I hadn't written this down yet, but this is 2.40 cubic meters per second for the entire plant. So uh, the number of filters equals the Q total divided by the contribution for each one. And that gives us um, an answer of 7.12. But like Reese was pointing out a minute ago, we can't have a fraction of a filter. We're installing these, we were told they are eight by eight. And so we actually have to have a minimum of eight filters. We cannot round down this time because seven filters is not enough to meet the demand. Um, and one thing that this provides us is a buffer that because we have more than enough filters if we put in eight, right? We have more area than we have to have if we have eight. So that's actually kind of a nice safety factor. Um, we can actually produce a little bit more given these conditions than um, what we were told as our required minimum amount. Okay, so um, any questions on this problem. Uh, hopefully one thing you'll find is that while these are not direct mass balances like we've done um, in some of the other work, they are fairly straightforward. They are kind of direct calculations, a little bit of geometry, but once you understand what the question is asking for, uh, it shouldn't be too too big of a problem. So. When studying for this section and relatedly with the membrane filtration, um, what I recommend you do is make sure that you understand what the problem is talking about, what the terminology means, and then make sure you just are keeping good track of your units through these problems, and I don't think you'll have much of a problem. Certainly, if there are any questions, um, feel free to go ahead and ask. Um, 
Otherwise, let me just take a, another mo moment to remind you and highlight this, um, this paper I've assigned as um, required reading. Again, what, I, what I'm interested in is that you, you take a look and you understand what went wrong in this Milwaukee cryptosporidium outbreak. Read enough to understand what is cryptosporidium. It's, um, I'll tell you now, it is a parasite. It's um, a protozoa, so it's actually larger than a bacteria, but it's a single cell um, organism. And they, they're pretty resistant to chlorination. And essentially this, this treatment plant had been operating and there was a couple things wrong with their operational scheme. And so um, eventually this treatment plant was responsible for sickening hundreds of thousands of people. And in one sense, it's like, oh, haha, ha, a lot of people got diarrhea. What a, what a bad day. Um, but because that's kind of what cryptosporidium does, it's a, often a, a several weeks sort of a thing where if you've ever heard of like hiking, hiking diarrhea, if you drink um, untreated water while hiking, that's uh, something that you, this and, and a similar bug called Giardia are fairly common. Um, so on the one hand, it's like, oh, haha, you know, good thing it wasn't coronavirus or whatever. But on the other hand, it was, um, it is actually pretty bad for immunocompromised people. So there was actually a lot of deaths associated with this for people whose immune systems um, were in, in some way compromised. So people with HIV, AIDS infections, um, uh, which there was a, an epidemic during that time uh, in that regard, um, really, really was, became a, a bigger problem than just, you know, a lot of people having diarrhea. So take a, take a look. It's an interesting story. Um, you know, it, it gives a little bit of the public health perspective as well. And that'll be the topic of one of our um, Moodle quiz assignments for kind of this um, second exam section. I'll try to have uh, another Moodle quiz posted for you um, at some time this week, and I'll give you at least a few days to, to see that and, and take that. So I think that's all I've got for you. So if there's any questions, please let me know. Um, otherwise, I will see you guys on Tuesday. Would you guys like me to post the uh, the little Excel file that I I worked on? Um, I think I'll probably post the quiz next week. There's you know there. Generally, it's most related to the granular filtration, but there's also some disinfection aspects. I may even push it back a little further. I, you probably have two weeks to read the read the assignment. I and I'll post the uh, quiz, and you'll see the quiz. And you'll remember, oh, right, I'm supposed to read that. So you'll have time to read it when you see the quiz. It's not going to be, you know, an in-class pop quiz because, you know, we're, we're doing remote. Um, so you, worst case scenario, you see the quiz, you see the deadline, you say, oh, okay, I need to go read it now. <laughs> um, but I, I think it's interesting. So I hope that I hope it'll be more than just um, an assignment that you have to get through. I, th I think it's worth taking a look. Yeah, that's a good question. Is that, is that the same as dysentery or is dysentery an umbrella term? Yeah, I believe that dysentery is generally an umbrella term and some of the outbreaks um, kind of before we had more specific knowledge about um, about pathogens and the, uh, the causes for disease. I think dysentery often was um, associated with uh, cholera, um, Vibrio cholera infections. And it's a good question. I, maybe I'll, I'll look up the definition right now for um, Right. 
Yeah, it, it looks to be a generalized term. Um, so that protozoan infection that that is that's what a um, that, that's what cryptosporidium is. Uh, so that that would certainly encompass it. Amoeba are similar protozoa. Um, technically, cryptosporidium is not an amoeba, but it is a protozoa. Um, yeah, so it, it's certainly a generalized um, term, and I think there's some history behind some specific uh, use cases that was used in before. We're going to talk a little bit more about different specific types of pathogens when we start talking about disinfection. So I, I think I will wait until we, we talk about disinfection before I require you to uh, complete this quiz, because it, it adds a little more context to it as well. Okay, well with that, I will see you guys on Thursday. Bye for now.